Hey guys, just a quick tutorial here on how to fill vector shapes and line work in OpenTunes. Um, first, real quickly, I'm going to go over some of the tools and features within OpenTunes that, that help to facilitate the sometimes tricky process of filling vector work. Um, sometimes you'll see a shape and it looks closed, but it just will not fill. Uh, so there's some tools within the program to help us figure out what's going on there. And after that, I'm going to go over a little workaround, a little trick that I've devised for making any shape that looks like it ought to be closed to the naked eye uh, actually make OpenTunes read it as closed. Uh, so first, real quick, let's go over the basics. Um, so I've got some vector line work here. I'm going to go ahead and open my tools all the way up. And I'm going to take my fill bucket. Let's check my green color here. I made a nice green color. All right, let's try and fill our objects. This one, obviously, that's not going to work. You can see the gap there. Here, just fill that. Oh, that worked. That worked. And this didn't work. Of course, you can see the gap there. But what if... I'm undo this here. What if the gaps aren't so apparent here, and the program is just not letting you close a shape? Well, there's a few features involved to help you get through the filling process. The first one I'm going to show you is the fill check. So if we go up to the menu here, menu bar, and we go to fill check, you'll see that these areas have darkened. They're this dark gray color. And what the program is telling us right now is that these areas are fillable. As we saw before, if we turn the checks off, these areas can be filled. And that's all that that check is showing us. These areas can be filled. What about these areas? These are the ones we want to fill. There's another check to help us find out why exactly we can't fill certain shapes. It's the gap check. So you select gap check, and we can go in here, and if you look, when I select a gap check, this little line showed up here. Also, one showed up right here. This little line, a little hard to see, but there's a line there. Now what that's showing is that is the gap uh, in the vector shape that has made it not a closed shape. And in order for us to be able to fill this shape, we need to close that gap. All right. Now, how do we close that gap? Of course, if we take our point edit tool and we can drag this point over here and we can just sort of manually close the shape however we want it to be closed. There's another option, a nice little option called the Tape Tool. If we go up here to the Tools and select the Tape Tool, and be sure to check Join Vectors. You can go from one endpoint, you can see the, now let me zoom in, you can see that when I take the Tape Tool and I hover over an endpoint, it sort of locks onto that endpoint. And that means it's targeting that endpoint, and when you click and hold, you can then drag to where you want that endpoint to connect. Uh, and it'll automatically lock onto the endpoint you are close to. And it won't let you lock anywhere else but an endpoint so long as you have it on endpoint to endpoint. So as you can see, boom, I closed it. Now if we have joined vectors off, we can still connect these endpoints but it just makes the line, and, and as you can see, with our fill check on, we still cannot fill this area. That's why you have to have joined vectors on. It closes the shape. All right. You can also, another cool feature of this, is you can do endpoint to line. And this, when you select your, your first target, you can only do endpoints. So we'll select that endpoint. And now when you drag, it'll target. You can see it's locked on and you can target it anywhere on the line. Or even right up to the end of the line, which is essentially where that endpoint was. So that's a way to close shapes. Now if we go over here to this shape, let's try it on this shape. We can, now let's try endpoint to endpoint, and let's close this up. Boom. And it actually tried to emulate the line thickness tried to find a nice average between them. It didn't quite get the curve. We select our 
endpoint edit tool, we can see it didn't quite get the curve. But we can do the iron tool. Let's go ahead and iron this out and make it a little bit smoother of the curve. No, that's not working so well. Anyway. So that is those are the tools that you have in your toolbox with OpenTools to close uh, close up shapes, vector shapes, so that you can fill them. This, this fill check is very useful, as is the gap check. So now if we turn off our checks real quick, and we take our paint tool, we can see that it was not lying. We can indeed fill all these areas. And so yeah, the checks are great, and the tape tool, and of course if you want to do it manually, you can just bring the points over each other, as I showed you before. Now, that's all fine and good, but what if you have a shape or a series of shapes with lots and lots of line work like this one, and you go and try to begin your filling, and it's not working. None of these, it's not letting me fill any of these areas. Not even this one, or this one. What about this? Oh, it's letting me fill the eye. Let's select our green color again. Okay, so I can fill the eye, but nothing else. That's no good. All of these look like they're closed, right? To the naked eye, even if you zoom in, as far as you can zoom, that should be a closed shape. But the program doesn't like it. It's telling you no, I won't fill that. Let's go to our ink paint, and let's select our checks and see the fill check. Okay, as you can see, yep, there's the eye, the only place I was able to fill. All right. Now, we could turn on our gap check, and here we have a cacophony of lines showing us all the various gaps. Whew! So, if we were to go through and try and do it manually with point to point, or if we were to go through and, and use the tape tool, this would just take forever. There's just so many areas where apparently there are gaps and uh, there would be a lot of trial and error involved. But there is a shortcut, there's a shortcut, which will make every shape that you see here that looks like it should be closed, it'll make OpenTunes uh, believe that it's closed. You can, you can sway OpenTunes to believe you. And here's how we do it. So let's go back to a, a view where we have an X sheet. Let's create a new level. In this new level, we are going to do a raster level. It's very important. Turn it into a raster level. I'm going to just set this to 600. Oops. Got to give it a name. Call it, here, we'll call it uh, convert layer. Because what we're going to do with this layer is we are going to convert the, ra the vector into raster. And then we're going to convert it back again. All right, so we'll leave our uh, our uh, fill check on. Let's go ahead and select our select tool, and we're going to take the whole shape. Okay. Then we're going to cut it. Come over to our convert layer, which is the raster layer, and we're going to paste it in. Okay. Now, as you can see, of course, it's a now it's a raster layer. So you can see all the pixels. But you can also see that the fill, this is what the fill ought to look like, right? Okay, so let's take our select tool again. Because we don't want a vector layer, especially when this low resolution. No, sir. All right. And let's cut it. And I'm using Control x to cut and Control v to paste. Uh, and let's go back. So we're going back to our original vector layer. And we are going to control V, paste it in. Now we have as you can see it is a full on vector, got no pixels. And all those areas you wanted to fill are now um, fillable. So if we turn off our check, we go to our ink and paint, we can turn off our check, and let's go ahead and test this out. Pick my color my paint bucket. Yay, I can fill anywhere. Now, you may have noticed 
that a bit of this shape has changed. You can see that there are now some curves that weren't in the original line work. Not Everything's not quite as sharp as it was. And that is because uh, when I made the convert layer, I made it a very low resolution. So I'll show you how to avoid this. I'm going to go back here and I'm just going to go ahead and undo my way back to here. Alright, so this is why I originally had tried to do 600 dpi, but I forgot to the second time. So we go to a new level. We'll call it our convert layer 2 since we already have a 1 now. Uh, and go to a raster level. And let's make it 600 dpi. Okay, create our new raster level. All right, so now all the sharpness of this, and, and like in places like here, for instance, we can maintain all of that because we have a nice high resolution raster layer we're working with. So just go through the process again, cut, go over to our raster, paste it. And now we'll cut. And go back to our vector and paste it. And now, as you can see, it has maintained much more, a much higher fidelity to the original raster image because I have a nice high resolution vector. And I could have gone even higher and uh, but I think this is probably good enough. And so yeah, let's go ahead and go back to our fill check. Boom. Beautiful. Turn this check off. And fill to our heart's content. There you have it.